just beautiful. So, kind of at uh, two significant places on the battlefield. They're not the most visited, but they're still significant. Here we have a little signage, but first I want you to take a close look at this building. Do you notice anything odd about it? Anything odd about this building? Like right there? So here we are at the Chossel Farm. This was a delaying action. Six p.m. on the second. So while the wheat field was kind of a draw, at the moment the Union is falling back. Mind you, many many battles here at Gettysburg and. Uh, Elsewhere during the Civil War, you know, a lot, a lot of battles were not, you know, um, uncontested. You know, some of them were what uh, some of us call seesaw battles, where, you know, for a couple hours, um, you know, the troops were in, in, in one general area, um, one particular field or what have you, and, you know, they were just getting pushed back and gaining ground and getting pushed back again. And so, you know, that's the wheat field. I haven't covered the wheat field, guys, because it, it's just a big, ugly mess. Um, there's no point in getting into the minutia of it, and that in itself is a point I'm going to get back to soon, hopefully. But it, it, was, it was a big swirling vortex, <laughs> is what the wheat field was. Of course, that followed um, after the peach orchard. It was a kind of spillover from uh, the blunder of a particular civilian general who advanced too far and created a salient, as we all know. And we're about to get to that point in just a second. But uh, it, it was a vortex. It was just a miasma of blood and, and confusion um, insofar as how it started, um, how it was fought, and how it ended. Um, there, it was just utter chaos. And there's no point in trying to get too scholarly about a bunch of chaos, if you ask me. I mean, some people are up to the task. That, that, that's fine. I'm not knocking them. I just don't see a whole lot of point in it myself. It was just a big, swirling, ugly mess that just kind of spilled over from one area into another area, and, you know. Sorry. It's really hard to make out. Second position, 6 p.m. July the 2nd. Ninth Mass Battery. Very interesting monument right here by the Trossel Farm. But that's not quite why we stopped here. Old Dan Sickles was seriously one of the most improbable people to ever be successful again, then after he screwed up again. Then after he screwed up again to become successful again, it's just like the dude was just like a a phoenix. <laughs> he was a political phoenix, and like I've said, it just it, it begs so many questions. Now, in the last uh, couple videos, if you've seen them, or the last video uh, over closer to the peach orchard, I've kind of addressed a lot of this already. But one point that I want to make is that for all his glory, this is all he got. It's pretty pitiful, right? I mean, he, he never should have made it this far in the first place. Then he creates a salient, drags half of Meade's army over in the wrong, you know, is nothing but a headache 
for a battle that they barely eke out. And after that, he becomes the leading voice of the commission to set up a national military park. And that's my last point about this. Who, 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 who gets away with screwing a 15 year old after he, after he knocked up her mother, marries her, right? Then becomes a congressman. All right. Who gets away with that kind of stuff? Who murders somebody in cold blood in Lafayette Square in front of the White House? and gets away with it. Who creates a nightmare situation for a general in one of the most important battles of the Civil War and then gets away with it again? It's ridiculous to think that this man was not protected. As I've mentioned, I've kind of addressed that. He was protected by Buchanan. He was protected by Lincoln thanks to his relationship with Mary Todd. He had an accomplice with his interesting friend Wyckoff. It seems that some very, very, very powerful people wanted not only Dan Sickles to become a Union general and to see battle, a major battle, but it seems that some very important people also wanted him to remain pertinent after he screwed up in one of the greatest battles of the war and to then go on and become one of the leading voices of battlefield preservation to me it's not ridiculous to think that that's a conspiracy it's ridiculous to think that other people don't realize that that's a conspiracy it's conspiracy after conspiracy after conspiracy that this guy kept getting away with what he got away with uh, basically adultery philandering on multiple occasions murdering a man in broad daylight and then refusing uh, disobeying orders in a major engagement and then going on to become one of the leading voices of how this tale was told in the future. My last point is I mentioned Sickles' links to the Masonic establishment. And while they can't quite really be proven that he was, well, you know what, that, that there is some proof. Well, 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 one shouldn't quite jump out there and say he was absolutely, definitely a Mason. It can definitely be said that he had many friends who were. He was extremely well connected. But getting to the crux of my, my point here, that the goals of the Masons are difficult for most people to understand because they don't realize what a plan is. They don't realize an agenda when they see one. And when one is hatched, they are so easily divided, they have no point in understanding anything from that point on, which kind of brings us up to the current day. <clears throat> history has always been orchestrated by powerful people there is no exception to that in human history that's what history teaches us as long as there's ever been society as long as there's ever been governments and nations there have been people trying to rule the rest that these people have plans that we may not always agree with them and that if we don't agree with them they have to force the situation they have to force a situation let's just say America's not real happy on going to the war with the Muslim world for another 20 years well what if that situation is forced one September morning I've said too much it's 10 minutes there are many more things to be said, guys, but we'll have to pick this up again. Later.